Flamin' Hot Cheetos, anyone? Wow. Flamin' Hot Cheetos, so hot, careful where you eat them. Wow. Cheetos, Flamin' Hot Snacks. Dangerously hot. Richard Montañez was a dropout. He could barely read or write in English and mopped floors for a living. But that changed when he stood up to America's top executives when pitching a billion dollar idea. The son of Mexican immigrants, Richard was raised in Guasti, California during the 60s. With Guasti being a tiny farming town, he lived in a one bedroom apartment with his mother, father, grandfather, and 10 siblings. They all rolled up their sleeves and picked grapes for a living, but it wasn't enough to get by. My whole life was about leftovers and about donating, about getting in that welfare line. No one ever told me that I could be something great. It was one of the many struggles that he faced. One day, Richard's mother was getting him ready for school when he burst into tears. Why are you crying? She asked. I don't want to go to school. Everybody speaks English. I can't even speak a word, he pleaded. His mother didn't give in and made him go. As his uncle walked him to the bus stop, he looked up to the green bus and asked, Why can't I get on the yellow bus? Why do I have to get on the green bus? He didn't know what discrimination was, but he could feel it from the stairs. In the third grade, he brought a burrito to school for lunch. His classmates had never seen one before and wouldn't stop looking. Embarrassed, Richard hid it in his bag. The next day, he begged his mother to make him a bologna sandwich. Instead, she made him two burritos, one for him and one to share with a friend. By the end of the week, his mother's burritos were so popular that he started selling them. I learned that at the moment, that there was something special about being different, that there was a reason that we all just couldn't fit into the same box. While he started to warm up to the other students, he still struggled with his English. So in the fourth grade, he made a decision that he would regret. He dropped out of school. Under the sweltering heat, he worked in the fields and took on odd jobs, slaughtering chickens, washing cars, and picking weeds. He saw no way out of his life of poverty until his friend told him about a job opening. Down the road in Rancho Cucumanga, a Frito-Lay plant was looking for a janitor. They were willing to pay more than what Richard was making, $4 an hour. It would pave the way for a better life with insurance, benefits, and social mobility. At the time, Richard was 18 and could barely read or write in English, so he asked his wife to help him fill out an application. He met with the hiring manager and was hired on the spot. When he broke the news to his family, his grandfather gave him some advice that would always stick with him. Make sure that the floor shines and let them know that a Montanez mopped it. Richard promised to become the best janitor Frito-Lay had ever seen, and he made sure people knew it. Every time someone walked into the room, it would smell fresh. I realized there's no such thing as just a janitor when you believe you're going to be the best. As they say, your attitude determines your altitude, and that turned out to be true for Richard. In the mid-1980s, Frito-Lay had fallen on tough times. To boost morale, the company's CEO, Roger Enrico, encouraged every worker to act like an owner. Most of them brushed it off as a cliche, but Richard took it to heart. I didn't know what I was going to do. Didn't need to, but I knew I was going to act like an owner. After mopping floors for nearly a decade, he gathered the courage to ask a salesman if he could help him on his day off. The salesman agreed and brought him to a convenience store in the Latino neighborhood. While the salesman restocked inventory, Richard scanned the shelves across the room. I saw our products on the shelves and they were all plain, Lay's, Fritos, Ruffles, and right next to these chips happened to be Mexican spices. At that moment, he realized that Frito-Lay didn't have any products that were spicy or hot. It was a huge missed opportunity for the Latino market. A few weeks later, Richard picked up some Mexican corn from a street vendor. As he took a bite, he had a revelation. What if I put chili on a Cheeto? He thought it would be a crazy idea, but realized nobody had given any thought to the Latino market. It was then that Richard decided it was time to act like an owner. One night, he was working late when a machine broke in the assembly line, leaving a batch of undusted Cheetos. Richard considered it a stroke of luck and took some home. He and his wife spiced them up and nailed down a recipe. When they gave samples to their family and friends, they were hooked. So Richard decided to turn his idea into a product that others could enjoy. But first, he would need to get one person's attention, Frito-Lay's CEO. He grabbed the company phone book and started flipping through the pages until he found his number. Without hesitation, Richard called him. 
His assistant picked up. Mr. Enrico's office? Who is this? Richard Montanez. What division are you with? California. You're the VP overseeing California? No, I work at the Rancho Cucamonga plant. Oh, so you're the VP of operations? No, I, I work inside the plant. You're the plant manager? No, I'm the janitor. The assistant paused. One moment, she finally said. Richard was connected with the CEO and told him about his idea. He loved it and told Roger that he would be at the plant in two weeks. Moments after they hung up, the phone line started ringing off the hook. The president called the division president, who called the vice president, who made more calls to reach the plant manager. They were all demanding to know who was this janitor that just called the CEO. When the plant manager found Richard, he stormed up to him and yelled, Who do you think you are? Do you realize what you've done? Everybody's coming. Then he told Richard, You're doing a presentation. Richard thought to himself, Who do I think I am? What right do I have to call the CEO? He had never done homework in school and now he had to give a presentation. He was clueless about what he should do next. When he went home that day, he told his wife he was in trouble. She calmed him down and came up with the idea of going to the library to learn about marketing strategies. They found the right book and copied the first five paragraphs word for word. When they went back home, they filled up a hundred bags with their samples and drew their own design on each one. On the day of Richard's presentation, he bought his first $3 tie. As he gathered his bags, his wife stopped him at the door. Don't forget who you are, she said. Go get what belongs to us. When Richard walked into the boardroom, he thought to himself, here I was, a janitor presenting to some of the most highly qualified executives in America. He delivered his presentation with confidence until one executive stopped him. How much market share do you think you can get? He asked. Richard started shaking. He had no idea what he was talking about. But then he quickly thought about the last time he doubted himself and the lesson he learned. In the third grade on every Tuesday, two after-school trainers would pull up. One of them was for the Latino kids. When it came time to stand in line, Richard purposely walked into the other one. You should have heard my friends looking at me. Ricardo, estás loco. You're in the wrong line. This is your line. This is where they told us to get in. And I looked at my friends. This is the truth. I said this. They have cookies inside. As he got closer, he second-guessed his decision. What if he got rejected? Even worse, what if the trainers told him he doesn't belong? When I got there, what do you think those two ladies did? They filled my pockets with cookies! Why did I get in that line? I was hungry. When you're hungry for that thing you want to accomplish, you won't be afraid. Taking in that lesson, Richard stretched his arms wide and said, That much market share. The room fell silent as the CEO stood up. Ladies and gentlemen, do you realize we have an opportunity to go after this much market share? He said with a smile. He turned to Richard. Put that mop away. You're coming with us. Six months later, Frito-Lay started testing Richard's idea in small Latino markets in East LA. If it was a success, they would sell more. If it failed, Richard would have to go back to mopping floors. It seemed that there was a big group of executives who wanted it to fail. They thought I got lucky. They were paid big bucks to come up with these ideas. They didn't want some janitor to do it. Richard proved them wrong. By 1992, his idea, now known as Flaming Hot Cheetos, was sold across the US. It became one of the most successful products in Frito-Lay history, making the company billions of dollars. Today, Richard is PepsiCo's Vice President of Multicultural Sales and Marketing and teaches MBA classes. Not long ago, a student asked about how he was able to teach without a PhD. I do have a PhD, he told them. I've been poor, hungry, and determined. This is the story of how a janitor created America's favorite snack. What did you find inspiring? Let us know in the comments below. Yeah.